Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about a 3D printing project that was something super quick, and it was a really great use of practical 3D printing um, just around your house, or in my case, an apartment, and something that um, I ran into and how 3D printing was able to very easily uh, and effectively solve that problem for me. There's been a few times over the last month or two where I've wanted to record something, but the background behind these curtains that is what we're going to talk about today is the balcony or the, uh, the patio, I guess in this case. And although we do have blinds, when I get home from work or afternoon, the light that's shining in through the blinds looks really bad. Like, I mean, I'm sure most of you guys have taken photos and you've had a photo taken in front of a window or something like that. And the result is that the, the object or the thing that's supposed to be what you're taking a photo of is really dark because you've got the light hitting from the back and cameras don't like that. They don't do a good job of picking up um, the correct color scheme and it just ends up looking really washed out and bad. So due to that, there's been a few times where I wanted to record, but I looked at the footage or um, just wasn't happy with how things were looking. So I decided, hey, I want to get some blackout curtains for the living room. And unlike normal me, which researches everything like crazy before purchasing, I hastily hopped on Amazon and did a quick measurement of what I would need as far as the length of the pole goes for the curtains. And I ordered a uh, curtain rod as well as a curtain. Well, my girlfriend Erin instantly when I told her, hey, I ordered curtains and a curtain rod, she said, well, did you measure everything? And um, I said basically like, oh, you know, we'll be fine. I'm sure it's not gonna be a, a problem. Well, I, I was wrong. And um, when the curtain rod showed up, one of the main issues initially was that on the ends of the curtain, they had these little, um, I guess, curtain rod balls, which are supposed to just make your curtain look nice or the curtain rod, it gives it a little, a little something. Well. This sliding door is a little bit uh, interesting in the sense that it goes all the way into the neighboring wall. So there is really no space between these two, like between the end of where this window or this sliding door is and where this wall hits. So the issue was that there was no way for me to actually have this on there um, without it running into the wall and having this side of the pole sticking really far out. So. Instantly, I thought to myself, like, this is, this is going to be easy. I could easily just 3D print a smaller uh, version of an end cap, which I did. Um, so I ran over to the hardware store with uh, this, this guy in hand and basically found out the exact um, uh, width of this bolt. And I picked up a couple bolts and I really quickly and easily just designed a very simple end uh, end cap where this slotted into this was prototype one where my measurements were not totally correct So um, the one that's actually on there is the correct size But so the bolt just snugly fits inside here and then you screw it into place and it gives you a lot more room So instead of taking up all this extra space, you've now just got a really small uh, end cap well the next issue I ran into was to hold the curtain rods up, it uses these guys, which are just basically something that bolts into the wall, the rod sticks into here, and that's that's really all there is to it. So even with that small little end cap that I printed, even if I had this as far as I could possibly get it in the corner, I still had this being the limiting factor of I couldn't get this all the way to the very, very corner. There was still a pretty obvious gap, and when I tried closing the curtain, there was still maybe a couple of inches where you can completely see out. Um, and it just looked bad. I wasn't happy with it. And I, I knew that even if uh, it maybe hadn't been the biggest deal in the world, it was gonna irritate me. And so what I ended up doing was, I basically took one of these guys that I had made as just a standard end cap. And I went back into Fusion 360, just added a couple of mounting holes. So that way what I could do is, is I could screw this onto the end of that pole, push it all the way up against the neighboring wall, and then drill this into that wall. So that way, instead of being supported on this side, it would be supported on that side. And it turned out awesome. It was really, really easy to do. And now the curtains are able to fully close the whole way. And it just looks great. Um, I ended up just printing it in PLA, which I normally, for things that are gonna get a lot of heavy use, I would use um, something a little stronger like PETG or even ABS, but honestly, for how light the curtains are and how wedged it is in there, it's likely fine. Um, Aaron actually, uh, <laughs> I asked her if she'd be okay with me using Vertigo 
galaxy, so it's got a little bit of sparkle to it. Um, Vertigo Galaxy, if you don't know, is an awesome filament from uh, Filamentum, and uh, it looks it looks absolutely great. So something like this is a really cool use case for 3D printing. Um, 3D printing again. There's a lot of really cool things on Thingiverse that you can print, and a lot of users have made things that you could apply to, you know, like IKEA hacks and things like that. But knowing just a little bit of basic CAD can be incredibly uh, powerful tool when paired with 3D printing. So, I mean, to be able to do that, honestly, you could probably spend maybe just an hour in Fusion 360 and be, you know, confident enough to be able to create something really simple like this. Um, you pair this with something like a, a set of digital calipers and it opens up a whole world of possibility and things that you can customize and repair and tweak. Um, so I wanted to share this with you guys because I was really, really proud and excited of this. Um, it is something that is really simple and I do like a lot more complex projects and complex prints than this, but seriously, like when you run into a real world or real, you know, problem, if you want to call it that, um, in just normal day-to-day -day life and you have the ability to do something so quickly with one of these printers, it is really cool. And um, again, it just goes to show how powerful um, 3D printing truly is. Not only can you make cool knickknacks and doodads and prototype and parts, but you can use it for home renovation slash home improvement projects and it does a really great job. So I figured that maybe by showing you something that I did that's really simple around the house, maybe that would inspire you or um, maybe give you an idea of hey, like that thing that's been bugging me, maybe I can 3D print a part for it. And seriously, don't, like if you get a 3D printer and you know you haven't done any 3D modeling ever before, which is no problem, I've never touched 3D modeling prior to getting into 3D printing, you know, don't be scared or think like, oh, there's no way I can't, I can't do that, I'm not a 3D model, it's probably really crazy. Yes, there are certain things with 3D modeling that are very advanced and there's things that I could, I could at this point with my current knowledge, like no way do. But for things like this, it is very achievable and attainable and a very rewarding thing to just do something very, uh, again, simple like this. So on that note, I'll end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys are all doing awesome, having a great weekend, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. On that note, I am out. Peace, guys.